Hi everyone, in this video we're going to have a look at a general overview of the Sample Manager plugin from ADSR. So in the bottom right hand corner we see we have a draggable area which allows us to resize the plugin and what we can do is we can make this really long so we can see all of our samples and their full names or likewise we can make this real nice and small and we could save some screen space for other things such as other plugins within the project. Across the top we have the search bar we can use this to search for our samples either by sample name or by the sample tags. We can do this for multiple tags and we could also search for sample packs just by using the name of the sample pack included in the title. So for example, I know I've got an audio tent sample pack saved here. So I'll type in audio tent and we can see it shows us all of the samples filtered with that name. And the good thing about this is that the way it works is that it will update as I'm typing so for example, if I was looking for top loop, I could just type top and it will show me all the samples with just top. But then if I was to add the loop, it will further the search to show everything with top loop. Going back to tags, let's have a look for the samples with the clap tag. We can see we've now filtered all of our samples pane just to show us tags that have clap. Likewise, we'll do this for bass. And you'll see as I type, it's going to show me the available tags. So here we have background, bass, bell, bells and break. So I could type it or I could just click on the actual tag. And we could actually use multiple tags and widen this search. So at the moment, we're seeing all of the samples with the bass tag. But what if we wanted to see samples that were tagged bass and lead? So this will show us all the samples with bass, all the samples with lead and all the samples with both bass and lead. So I'll just click on this. And there we go, we've got bass, and if I scroll down, you can see we've got lead as well. So I'll just play these, and we can see it previews just by clicking on the sample. So to get rid of these tags, all we have to do is click off them here, and to do that we can just click anywhere in this button. And as well as that, we can also add or remove tags as well just by clicking here. So if I add and remove clap, or I could add and remove multiple tags like clap and dry. Moving on from the search bar, we have this menu down the left hand side with a few different menu items which is going to change what we see in this left hand screen here. So you can see we've got tags, we've got favourites, we've got a MIDI indicator, we have the libraries and we have the settings. So tags has now been covered quite well but I'll just run over the tags. What we have is we have alphanumerical order down here so we can hide the different letters for tags if we don't want to see them and minimize them. We can click on the tags and it will show us and you can see it also updates the search bar as well. It filters the tags in the list pane. And we can also see an indicator of how many tags there are as well just in the actual tag menu. And once again, we can choose multiple tags to widen our search. If I go to the bottom, you see we've got side chained, which is a custom tag that I added, hence why it's got the asterisk symbol after it. So what we could also do is we could add a few more of our own. So for example, I'll add a tag of techie. And we can now see techie, and this can be used later on to tag some of our samples as we're managing them. So we also have the favourites, if I just click on this, you can see it adds the tag of favourites and we can see it's in here because it's had this love heart selected which puts it in the favourites. As I do this you can see there's a count here which is going up indicating that I've got more favourites in this folder. If I click on this I could then also, as I did for the tags, I can also filter the favourites as well by adding further tags or searching within here. So we then have the MIDI indicator and what this MIDI activity indicator does is it allows us to see that we've got MIDI coming into the plugin. So we can see that also down here as well and if I go up and I use my computer keyboard I'll just hit a few notes I'll find a sample which is more appropriate. So here we can see we have 
this MIDI indicator in the top right of Ableton. We have the MIDI input going into the plugin. And then we have the audio coming out. So this means we can play the MIDI up and down the keyboard. And likewise, as you'd expect, we can also do this on a actual MIDI keyboard as well. So I'll just hit a few notes of my MIDI keyboard. And what you might have noticed there is this is also velocity sensitive as well. So if I hit it quietly and hit it louder and we're always getting that MIDI signal coming through. Likewise, as you'd expect, this also works with MIDI that's drawn in in clip view as well. So let's just hit in a few notes. And what I'll do is I'll program this as a kick drum. So if I just play this now, you can see we're also getting the MIDI indicator there. And it would be nice and easy for me now to just switch to a kick drum. So I'll just go to K. So these sound quite nice. And we have a kick drum in place. So moving on from the MIDI indicator, we then have the libraries. And we've already seen this before. It shows us all of our libraries. We've got a scroll bar. If we've got a whole ton of libraries in there, it shows us the library path. And it also shows us whether it's up to date or not, or it's still analyzing if we've just added it. And also the amount of audio files that have been added. We can also remove the libraries as well, just by clicking the X button. And we can refresh the libraries as well, which is great if we're using dynamic libraries such as Splice, Loop Cloud, or Noise because what it means is whatever samples we've downloaded, it's then going to pull those into ADSR with no further work. So we've got a really highly organized and managed tagging, searching and previewing system here. Moving into the settings, we have autoplay samples. Now, this is quite handy because if I go to a loop, You can hear it previews each time and I might not want it to preview, especially if I'm drawing in clips and I'm auditioning them here, then I might not want to hear the entire loop. So all I have to do is turn this off and now I can check out the different sounds without actually having to listen to them. And if I do want to listen to them, I just hit preview. In this case, I'm going to leave that on. We then have tool tips. Tooltips is this bubble that's appeared that says tooltips are enabled. So wherever I hover over stuff, you see we get the tooltips indicator. This is really handy when you've just got this plugin and you want to get used to it. I suggest leaving that on as it will help you if you're not sure about what settings are. Likewise, you also have some information down in the bottom toolbar as well if you're not sure. Also, if you're not hovering over any parameters, you also have the feature request link in the bottom toolbar. And what this is for, ADSR have some really big things planned for this plugin and they're going to have some updates over the coming months. And if you have any ideas, recommendations or suggestions and you want to have your say, then make sure you use this link to let ADSR know and then you can be a part of shaping the future of this plugin because there's some really exciting stuff coming soon. Next, you can also send some data to allow ADSR to improve the plugin. And then we also have updates as well. I suggest you leave this checked, which will automatically check for updates. And if there is an update, then you'll get a green bell icon down here above the MIDI indicator. So if I just click check now, we can see that I'm up to date, which is fine. We then have the help and support so you can get these videos along this tutorial link. And then we have some information about the plugin and the version number as well. So that's the settings and the libraries tab and the MIDI indicator. So in most cases, you're not really going to be in these settings once you've set the plugin up. You're mainly going to be concerned with tags and favorites. And what these two different menus do is they control what is filtered in this right hand pane here, which is our main sample list pane and our preview player. So as well as using these tags to filter the sounds, what we also have is we have these two filters as well. So we can turn off one shot. So we're only going to see loops. And we can also turn off loops so we can only see one shots. What 
what we also have within this menu is we have the favorite button which allows us to add the favorite we have the name of the sample we have the type so whether it's a loop or one shot so if i just scroll down a bit you can see we have loops here and we have one shots here indicated with the arrow we have a bpm which is analyzed when we initially add the library and that's going to be updated here obviously if it's a one shot it doesn't have a bpm and then we have all of the tags as well and we also have a random function so this is really cool what i'm going to do is i'm going to hide the loops so we found a sample but we're thinking maybe we'll change it for something else all i have to do is hit random So it's a nice way of being able to choose samples in a bit more of a creative way or a spontaneous way which can always lead to those happy accidents by using a sample you wouldn't usually choose which might sound a lot better. Then we have the preview player which is down at the bottom. We've seen that this dynamically updates as we click on different samples. With this player what we can do is we can favour it once again. We can also take away tags that we might not want and we can also add tags. So if I click add I could type in techie and it's added the techie tag and likewise you could also do this for genres as well so you could have an entire tag specifically for a genre or two tags so here we've got techie kick I might want to add techno as well and once again this dynamically updates so if I just type in F we've got all of the tags that we've got in the library for F so let's just get rid of those We've then got the waveform here. We can drag the sample into the DAW using this icon or we could also drag it straight from the sample list. And then we've also got a sample start point scroller here. So just to demonstrate this. This is great if you want to make a kick into a bass. You can just roll off some of that attack portion there. And we can even see on the waveform that this is a more high frequency sound because we can see that the waveform is spaced closer together. So we'll go somewhere about here where it should be much more bassier. And there we go, we've got ourselves a sub that we can play up and down the keyboard. We then have some different MIDI modes here. There's three to choose from. There's stop, loop and full which I'll explain shortly in another video and then finally we have the sync to DAW as well and what that does is it just syncs the samples that are getting played to the host tempo which is up here so at the moment we're at one two zero so if I just press play and we'll test this out so if I go up I'll turn the metronome on and if I was to take this off it's still going to work because what I've got is I've got the MIDI triggering this one shot. However, if we were using a longer sample, then this wouldn't work. So just to demonstrate that, what I'll do is I'll bring this down to one, two, five. I'm gonna duplicate this. So we now have our kick. And on this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this out. So we've just got one long MIDI note and we'll look for a loop. So I'm going to type in, in fact, I'll look for the, the actual tag. We don't have one, so what we'll do is we'll just, we'll just search for it up here by typing loop. And make sure we check loop back on. And at the moment, we're synced to the DAW. So just to demonstrate this, we'll hit play. And we can hear this is playing in time with the tempo of the project. So that's a great feature from ADSR and it just means that we're always going to have a nicely synced up project and we can preview our different loops no matter what the project tempo is. And even if we're automating the project tempo, it's always going to sound right. That's the end of this video. I'll see you in the next one where we're going to start building a loop and covering the sample management such as tagging, browsing and searching in a bit more detail.